In this lesson, we're going to quickly learn about classes and objects. Just the basics about them, um, nothing too complicated. So, essentially, let's get into what a class uh, an object is. So, let's say we make a list, okay? A, we'll call it list one, not list P. I keep calling everything list P uh, outside of this course. And a few numbers in it you know we'll put a few items in the list yeah now this list here is an object okay it's actually a, a data structure that contains several different data types inside of it well several items they can be of any data type they all happen to be integers here um but this you know is a data structure uh, that would represent a, a, a list in real life or it could represent a list in real life okay so we'll just run that in for now and I'll show you what I mean by could represent a list in real life and it's really made to represent real life lists so we'll say uh, oranges um, oil and I don't know what else uh, curry let's say yeah and I won't call it list two actually what I'll call it is shopping list right and this is a list that you might use in real life now i would suggest that <laughs> if you're only need to buy free items you probably don't need to write down a list to remember uh, to buy oranges oil and curry right um, but this object here and this is an object of type list uh, represents an object in the real world it represents uh, a list a shopping list specifically in the real world right and when we create a list we can put as many items as we want into the list of whatever different data type uh, to make you know list representations in the way that we want okay so let's write that in now a list is you can make objects of a list should i say um because there is a class written into python that allows you to create lists right and a class is a way of writing data structures or maybe even data types depending on how you write the class um if the data structure doesn't exist to begin with okay so let's say for example i don't know i want to make a class of type um, personal information okay personal information not information information please thank you very much i use this class uh, key identifier here and then the name of the class and this can be you know a new data type it, it won't be a list but it could be a data type similar to a list or whatever i want it in this case i would like it to represent some personal information of some okay so in order to set um, this data type or uh, this data structure, we need to define how it initializes, how it's created. Okay, and in order to do that, we have to use the keyword def, which stands for define, two underscores followed by the word in it, and two more underscores after the word in it. In it stands for initialize. Okay, inside of these brackets here. We have to put the word self which refers to the item being created and we have to put in the variable well we don't have to but we can put in the variable names or, or the names of uh, the properties of the uh, of the class of the object that we'd like to create so personal information we might want um, phone number phone number um age i won't say date of birth i'll say age and name shall we say we'll say name okay so by using the keyword self using a dot and using uh any name so we'll say for phone number we'll just simply use the word number okay and we'll say self.number is equal to phone number right this might not make sense now but i'll explain it in a minute we'll say that self dot 
age is equal to age, okay? And we'll say self dot name is equal to name. Notice how that's not capitalized. You can write this anyway. It could be written the same as this. I just want to show you that these are distinct from these, and I'll demonstrate that um, quite soon. Okay, so let me just um, write that in there. Now let's say we want to make a personal information object. Um, let's say we want to get Bunny's personal information. Okay. Now, in order to initialize this object, we actually have to use the uh, the name of the object, which is personal information object, and then parentheses. Now you can see here it tells you what arguments you need. You need the phone number argument, the age argument, and the name argument. Okay. Um, so let's say I want the phone number to be, we'll, we'll put it in as a string. We'll say 09778. Nine, uh, nine six one. Okay. I want the age to be twenty two, and we want his name to be uh, Johnny Castello. Castello, depending on where you're from. And this will create a personal information object with the variable name Johnny. Now, to explain how that's worked. Whenever you initialize uh, an object of a class that you've defined, the init values here, it will have several uh, different properties. These self dot are the properties it will have. Okay. Now, this here in the init is the argument that's used uh, when you create an object of whatever the class name is. So in this case, when we create an object of personal information, this is the argument that we use here uh, to initialize it with, right? You can ignore the self bit, but you do have to put it in the argument. But you don't have to actually put it in the formal argument when creating. You just have to put it in the definition of uh, in initialization, okay? And here we're saying that the attribute number of the self dot number uh, creation element is equal to the argument that's here which is a phone number right and we're saying that age self dot age personal information object dot age so johnny dot age uh, would be equal to this here this argument here the second argument it's the third argument in this but as i said ignore the self part and the second argument here which is 22 and then also the name uh argument here self dot name is equal to the name argument all right so self in this context says the item that we are trying to create this item dot property in this case dot number self dot property age self dot property name this so that's saying johnny dot age or johnny dot name okay And now show that I can actually print out Johnny.age. And it will show me, it will come back with 22. There's no EFO. There you are, 22. So what this is saying is this item here, this variable we're creating, regardless of the name of the variable, it has this property of number and that property is equal to this argument. I could actually get rid of the this here and have no formal argument if I wanted, but this is just the basics. So I'm showing you how to set that on initialization, right? So let's say I make another personal information class, all right? Let's say we call it Sarah, okay? I can change I can make uh, Sarah's number a different number. I can make her age 97 if I want. And I can even call her, I don't have to call her Sarah, I could call her Saz the Legend, okay? Because I just love her so much. I just think she's an amazing person, so I've called her Saz the Legend. 
and you'll see here that each of these arguments corresponds to each of these properties. Now, because Sarah is of object type personal information, when I say, for example, print Sarah dot name, for example, I'm saying print the name aspect of this object. And because it's of type personal information and that uh, object has this property, it won't come up empty. It will actually print the name, so as the legend. All right. Let's say uh, I want to make another class. Let's just call it some class, some class. Okay. I could define an initialization, and I can say self because we always need to use the argument self. Um, I could say number and I could leave it at that and we can have a self dot number is equal to number okay and I can say self dot number two is equal to 99 and I can say that self dot string is equal to a string like this okay don't know why that was went up with that error. So let's define some class. Now, in the some class, uh, oops, I'm gonna I'm gonna say s class one, which represents some class one. In the some class constructor here, the only argument I need is the number. Notice I still don't need the self argument here. It's not coming up with a self argument. You just need the argument after self if one is specified. So I'll say that numbers 905. What do you think is going to happen? What are the values of uh, S class going to be? Okay. I'll let you think about that. And I can tell you what they're going to be. It's going to have three properties. It's going to have the property number because objects of the class some class always have these three properties number number two and string here in the argument to initialize um, a some class object the arguments given as self and number as i've said self is voided in the actual argument and only the arguments after self need to be used when making an object of this class okay so this self.number should be equal to number, which here is 905. S class one dot number two should be equal to 99 because it's it's set this way to begin with, and self.string should be equal to that string there. Alright. Let's uh let's print all those values, shall we? So we'll print S class one dot number. I don't really want all these autocorrecting things. S class one dot number two S class one dot string. Now let's print the number, which should be the number stated in this argument, nine oh five. The number here should be ninety nine, as is set by the class. And the string here should be a string. So you can see that you can set uh, the properties, but that this argument here doesn't have to set the properties, but the properties do have to be set in a class. And in this way, I actually have a new data type uh, that, could rep that represents a number, another number, and a string. What would I use that for? I don't know, but this, this information I can actually use Let's say in a list. So let's say I want to make a list uh, called name list or PI list, actually, which stands for personal information list. I'll capitalize the PI. And we can put in the objects Johnny and Sarah. All right. 
pi list zero dot um h all right we'll just try that out there shall we see if that works oh, okay yeah of course it didn't work i know why though so you can see here that i can fetch that item from the array and I can actually display, display it here, the dot age of uh, this 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 Johnny item inside of the list. Okay, that's something you could experiment with. One more thing I'll show um, for when you're defining classes is that you can actually define a class uh, without any arguments. So let's define a frog. Okay, so we'll say the class is frog. Define underscore underscore init underscore underscore and we just put self as the only argument okay and we'll say that self dot oh I don't know self dot legs equals four uh, self dot height equals ten centimeters and self dot length equals 22 centimeters okay i'm not sure why that was coming up with an error but it's fine right now i can actually make a frog just by saying frog one is equal to frog that's it that's the whole argument i've now made a frog object and i didn't have to pass a single argument and it's creator and I can ask for frog one dot length not length length and it'll give me this 22 centimeter okay so essentially from all of this the main thing to understand is if you want to make some kind of new object uh, you can create new objects uh, by making your own class right you want a new complicated data structure or you know just just a different object you can put in a list or whatever you want to manipulate a new a, a new object that represents something in the real world right you can make that by defining a class all these uh, self dot attributes such as self dot age self dot name here these are all properties that the class will have right and you can make this here the init is the creator it's how you initialize an item you can add arguments to these uh, that will change these values and determine these properties values if you wish or you can simply uh, give no argument other than self and you can predefine the values of the properties okay there's many reasons why this may or may not be useful I will go into classes in a bit more depth. This is just a basic guide on how to create classes and not really what you should do with them. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed.